testify. And I'm, I'm going to look for the red light. I'm used to a red light, but I'll try and be very careful to look three, for the red light. Three minutes, <laughs> Attorney Dean. <laughs> so I won't go through the introduction because I'm presuming that everybody remembers from the morning. And I just want to start off with first thing. I don't agree that teachers don't want guns in schools. I know they want guns in schools. They call me and consult with me all the time. And they say, what can we do? You know, we don't want to lose our job. And I tell them, it's a personal decision they're going to make. But they can carry a gun every day. And the only way, absent some sort of mishap that anyone will know if they're ever carrying a gun, is when they pull it out to save the students. And I reminded them, you have to be alive to be fired. So yes, they may very well fire you, because it's against the policy of a, of a teacher carrying a gun in school, but you'll be alive, and that's worth a whole lot. Next, when you look at this particular bill, I think to say that it's not a gun-free bill, it is a gun-free bill. Whenever you hear the words, and I'm quoting those who support um, the bill, which I would like to see you ITL it, they say it's a good beginning. It's a step in the right direction. And it's common sense. Whenever you hear those words, those are code words for we want gun control, we want guns banned. Good step, first step. This isn't enough. This is a slice after slice after slice. But you have to ask yourself, what is it that they're trying to do? And we go back to them saying, well, you're not going to be gun free. Well, a gun that's locked in the trunk is worthless. And the time it takes you to get that gun, it could be all over. The other thing that I think this is really important to point out, one of the speakers who um, supported this bill talked about the hit rate of police departments. And they, the, I don't agree with the speaker entirely. I know that the hit rates are lower. The hit rates are lower from police. There's all sorts of studies with New York City having probably the best studies. But here's what's more important. They also have studies on civilian hit rates and accidental shooting rates. They're phenomenal. Our citizens rarely shoot the wrong person, and their hit rate is incredibly high. So when you do have an altercation where an armed citizen must respond, um, their hit rate is very, very good. And it depends on whose studies you look at. As they've said, it depends on, you can look at New York City data, it's probably the largest police force in the world. You can look at FBI uniform crime reports, city county data. But all of them show that armed citizens rarely make a mistaken shot and almost always have a, guy, a higher hit rate than the police. So you look at that and say, okay, these are statistics, these are facts, this is an opportunity to save our children. But I think one of the other speakers, and again, it was a speaker supporting the bill that I opposed, said, talked about the politics of school boards. She made my point precisely. If you think that any government <coughs> authorized in writing by the school board duly authorized, designated, to possess a firearm. That is going to be political as heck. If you're rich or powerful or own a business in town, or maybe donate money to the Glee Club, um, you're likely to get one of those, like Donald Trump in New York, if you will. Um, the rest of us are going to be out of luck. And so I respectfully say, and I know my three minutes is up, so I'm, I'm, I'm trying to close in on it. Thank you. I, I'm watching now. I know what, I figured out what she was doing. I didn't before, just so you know. Um, I really think that this is another gun-free school zone, and it's designed to treat those socioeconomically disadvantaged differently. I can tell you that when I was a waitress, no one would give me a license, because I was a waitress, but now I'm a lawyer, my life's worth more. I guess I'm treated differently. That's wrong. So I respectfully say this should be ITL for a million reasons. Thank you, Ms. Dean. Any questions of the presenter? Yes, uh, Representative Jordan. Mr. Chairman, thanks for taking my question. So I just want to clarify something, because I'm a member of the, of the school board. Yes. So you advise clients or other people uh, not to follow the a school board policy. Is that correct? I advise them to make their own choices, but I give them the option. I say, give me your contract, give me your thing. If you choose to carry a gun, what are they going to do to you? They're going to fire you if they catch you, right? And so they have to choose that. But I remind them, you only get fired if you're alive. Thank you. Just follow up. So just to get clarified for me, because I'm not sure I did, you advise clients not to follow school board policy if they choose to do so? I advise them to make their own choices. 
I, I give them because like everything, there's cost and benefit. Any company that comes to you, if I advise a corporation, here's the potential fines, here's the potential cost. There's a billion potentials each way, and each one is different. And I don't make decisions for clients. I give them the plus and minus because it's a client's job to make their own decision. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you for being here. I have uh, Tom Newkirk next.